Joining us this morning, Tatiana Jordan. Tatiana Jordan. I get the name right. Jordan. Tatiana. Tatiana. Okay. It's Tatiana Jordan. It's a big day here at Connect because we're actually not in the Connect studios. We are at Trick 3D Studios in Midtown Atlanta, and I'm here with Chad Eikoff, founder of Trick 3D Studios. So yes. thank you for being here. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank I'm, you for having I'm me. I'm happy here. to be here in our studio <laughs> every day. Thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you for having me. So tell our viewers who don't know and they should know what is Trick 3D Studios. Yeah, Trick 3Ds, we do 3D animation, and really what we're focused on now is building virtual worlds and products um, and all the different ways that you can interact with those and leverage those from big brands to real estate to entertainment. Okay, so AR, augmented reality, mm -hmm. VR, virtual reality, and real quick, the difference between those before we talk about virtual worlds. Sure, well, they're just two different uh, technologies that one, VR puts you in a virtual space. Mm -hmm. um, so if you imagine a video game and then you just being in it or mm -hmm. avatar and mm -hmm. you're in a fantasy land and now you can be in it. AR is augmenting your existing space. So here we put on a headset and can see something floating in this particular environment. And really where we fit into that is because we build virtual worlds and virtual products that in that world, every brand has to be represented in some way. Your product is going to change from being something you scroll across as an image on a website to being a three-dimensional hologram of types that you can interact with in your actual space or in a virtual space. So to give our viewers some frame of reference, because they'll range from my 94-year-old grandmother, sorry, I disclosed your age, Grandma, um, two really cool techie people that know what the heck we're talking about. Yeah. Um, AR, I liken it to when you're watching a football game and you see them draw the lines yep. on the screen to Perfect. show you where the, where the touchdown happened. Yeah. That's an example of AR. VR, a really cool example of it is actually one of the products that you mm -hmm. have developed. Talk about the floor plan. Yeah, that's a great example. So Floor Plan Revolution yes. is a product we created that takes any two-dimensional floor plan mm -hmm. and grows it into a full three-dimensional virtual model home or in commercial real estate, a virtual walkthrough of the commercial space. Um, and in that case, you are able to go into the space mm -hmm. before it's built right. and see what it, it's going to be like. Or if it is built, see it staged differently yes. with different kind of furniture. Which has so many implications for both commercial uh, and then also you know, residential designers, interior designers. Yeah. And what Chad means by seeing the space and going into the space is you put on one of these headsets uh, and, and then you are transported into that world. You move around, you see, you feel, you can't touch, but you can pretend to touch. Um, but it's really cool and you can envision what your atmosphere would be like um, should those changes take place. Yeah, I think you're totally right. And one of the things that we love about it is we've always done computer animation and visual effects for mm -hmm. film or for TV. And you can make those look incredibly beautiful and they can be very cutting edge in terms of, you know, they're the science fiction things we look at and right. we're like, oh, great. The, you know, you can actually interact with a virtual space and change the floor to another thing. Um, you see that happen on shows on HGTV. Mm -hmm we're really about now making it real as yes. opposed to a visual effect. Yes. And so that's the part that's really exciting. It's next level. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. And so you have a ton of experience in the AR and VR space. Um, I would like for you to brag a little bit about the projects that you guys have worked on. <laughs> um, well, we started early. Delta Airlines is a big client and we did um, the first VR project with them. And so that's a, a good example of in brand spaces. We've, a lot of brands are doing one-off projects. Mm -hmm. And so we've just also created a VR platform mm -hmm. that allows brands to aggregate VR content into a virtual space. So instead of just one-offs. So that's a big thing we have in the brand space. Probably the coolest thing we've ever done in VR, we just um, did, which was the first ever uh, VR Wish grant for Make-A-Wish. 
It really is amazing. They came to us and they had a wish for a little boy named Zayden who wanted to go to space and in particular go to Saturn. And I mean, that alone, right? Like that's your wish? Like it's amazing that yeah. his mind went, not only is it creative, but it's also brave, right? Yeah, like, it's like not no, Disney take World, me to Saturn. Not, you know, California, but Saturn. Saturn, which is astounding in and of itself. Um, and then his mom had the foresight to ask him what would that be like and so he went on to describe and she recorded it a red rocket ship and what he sees in space and when he gets to saturn he meets a little green alien and that to me was such a perfect use of vr because obviously you can't take him to really space right now or especially saturn too two, a little too hot yeah <laughs> maybe maybe a little too cold in some areas um but so what we were able to do then is uh, we created it all in virtual reality. And so we, with Make-A-Wish, partnered um, with a whole community of people, including Dobbins Air Force Base, like went into quiet hours and had gave up a, a huge hangar. And so we recreated the hangar in virtual reality. And so he then, when he put on the headset, saw the same thing. So kind of mimicked augmented reality, mm -hmm. but we knew we wanted a seamless transition. So what happened is then the, the ground separated and the red rocket ship rose out of the ground. And he saw his rocket ship, the Zayden 7. Um, and then we went on his journey to Saturn. And he did it with a real astronaut sitting next to him as his co-pilot. Oh my gosh, you guys. So it was pretty amazing. It's amazing. I I love that story. I love it so much. And we're going to move on because I will not cry on camera for you today. Um, let's talk about virtual worlds. Uh, how, what are they and how do they differ from what you've been doing? Yeah, it's kind of a, a, a terminology is a big thing right now because yes. everybody gets intimidated and tries to, to it has a preconceived notion of things. And a virtual world really is just any environment that's built inside the computer. So it sounds sort of fantasy, like it should be just in a movie or just in video games. But like when we do the interior of an aircraft for Delta, that's a virtual world. When you do the interior of a home that isn't built yet, that's a virtual world. Or if you're doing Saturn and it's total fantasy, that's also a virtual world. Um, and traditionally, the only way for you to see those was to create a video or a still image. And so what VR does is allows us to actually when you put on the headset, make it feel like you're standing in that virtual world. How do you even go about doing that? Like, how how is that possible? Um, well, there's two avenues when you go into the technical world. So one is the way it's traditionally done, or traditionally done in um, mobile headsets is you basically have a sphere around you and you're rendering 360 degree imagery or video. So that's not that different than the way we would any visual effects company normally does their work. The other is, however, through um, basically the same technology they use to make games. That allows you to freely move within it. So mm -hmm. instead of just being locked and looking around a sphere, mm -hmm. you just like you would control with a game, instead of that, you're actually your body is moving through it, which you'll get to see in a little bit. Yeah, I'm so excited. We're going to get an actual, like, firsthand hands-on yeah. experience here at Trick Beauty Studios. It's just, it's amazing what's going on right here in our city. You think, man, you've got to go to Hollywood to get this kind of level of professionalism mm -hmm. and expertise and output, but you don't. It's right here in our city. Yeah, I mean, right now, I would argue there's more happening in Atlanta than in Hollywood. Um, so take that. Take that. But <laughs> there is definitely, in actual film production still more in LA but Atlanta is the third largest film economy in the world right yes, now yes. So there's a lot of great film work happening but in advanced technology we are uniquely positioned because of both of our schooling because of our technology mindset and our experience with entertainment um, to really mesh all of those worlds mm -hmm. um, so yeah it's an exciting so place to be. hashtag choose ATL just FYI gonna drop that plug there All right, so we're back. We are here at Trick 3D Studios in the day of everything that is Trick 3D. Yep. I've got two people who really do a lot of heavy lifting here, um, literally and figuratively. Yep. So Stacy Shade, Elliot Rothman, 
Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your shades, BT dubs. Look at these. Shades from the shade. Yeah. <laughs> You're these welcome. These are so tight. Like, I love them. I'll take them off just so I'm not shady. <laughs> um, but yeah, so tell us what is it like to work here? What is the environment like? Yeah, um, working at Trick 3D is such an amazing experience every day. And I've worked at a lot of different startups in town. I've worked at a couple of agencies. And for me, this has been the most exciting experience um, of my career so far. And the reason for that is the people. Um, the people are amazing. And then the second is we get to deal in emerging technologies every day. So there's always something to talk about, always yeah. something new to learn. Um, so for me, I just love it. Yeah. Um Trick 3D is absolutely challenging and rewarding all at the same time. Um, we create a lot of really amazing content and we do it with an absolutely brilliant team. Um, we're always pushing the boundaries and because of that we're coming up against delivering the unknown, <laughs> which is <laughs> sometimes a tall order, but we, we seem to figure it out. How and do you guys go about executing the vision that, that Chad puts in place? Sure, I'll take that one first. <laughs> um, usually by starting with the word no, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> Chad's behind the camera, by the way. <laughs> but maybe we could try this instead, is, is a lot of how these conversations go down. Um, Chad is, um, he's standing right there behind the camera, but he's, he, he is definitely a, a creative visionary. And um, I'm not saying that just because he's in the room, but what comes with that is a lot of challenges, a lot mm -hmm. of technical challenges. Now that we're working with virtual reality and augmented reality and things like that, there are certain limitations to what the hardware can do and what the resources we have and the time and budget will allow for. Mm -hmm. And so it's this delicate balance between pushing the creative towards what Chad's vision is mm -hmm. and doing what's technically possible and what's going to be stable for the client. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a hard balance. So for me, I deal in um, telling Trick 3D's story and telling Chad's story. So um, it's funny for me because when he comes up with these fantastic ideas, I'm like, great. And the team is like, yeah, how are we going to do? Um, but, they, <laughs> but they do it. And um, going back to what we just discussed, which is why I love being here every day, is um, it's just remarkable people. Um, and it's really, really cool to have you know a visionary like such as Chad leading us um, and pushing those boundaries, but then seeing um, the team iterate and tinker and, and execute on that vision in really creative and beautiful ways. Um, and so for me, as somebody who gets to talk about the company all the time, that's just really, really exciting and rewarding to see. So I'm here with Fatima and Ross of Trick Beauty Studios. Tell us what you do here. Uh, I'm the art director at the studio. Okay. I uh, help to facilitate the creative vision of the creative director as well as interface with Fatima um, to work on the execution and the vision for our projects. Okay. Yeah. Hello, I'm Fatima Abdullah, executive producer of production here at Trick3D and um, I kind of oversee all the projects as they come in and help Ross align on who's doing what and when and how he manage the deliverables. Wow, that, those are tall orders for both of you. Um, and I would like to talk about three things, uh, execution, quality, and then the skill sets you're looking at in potential future hires and teammates that you bring on. So first, let's talk about execution. How do you execute this, this huge vision uh, and deliverables that you have to manage? There isn't a, a, <laughs> a single answer for that. Uh, each project has its own difficulties. It has its own uh, execution problems mm -hmm. throughout. Uh, we really just try to figure out based off of what the um, client is asking for and try to marry that with our own creative vision. And then from there, there are certain kind of buckets that you'll try to fill in mm -hmm. order to uh, get through to the final completion. Mm -hmm. So for us, execution could mean anything from uh, digital rendering mm -hmm. with uh, 3D models and CG assets all the way through to live action photography, videography, um, post-production, and everything really from a traditional uh, film and animation pipeline all the way through to web development or interactive media design or and virtual reality and all those things that can potentially throw a project for an execution loop. Wow, a lot of variables. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, I say we get through it with a lot of talking. So every day we're in each other's offices, um, revisiting the creative, thinking about the best way to approach a new challenge, um, and really mapping things out. So uh, like Ross says, we have lots of digital types of delivery. So one thing he and his team do is make sure we're up on all the newest technology. Yes. <laughs> um, and really utilize uh, some uh, untested solutions and things people haven't really tried before to combine. All right, are you ready to go into a virtual home? Yes, okay. absolutely. <laughs> Especially right, so if it's in the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pretend that it is, because yeah. I would like to be there too. Okay, so tell me what this is. Okay, so this is virtual reality. So okay. you're going into virtual reality. This is the HTC Vibe. HTC Vibe. Which this form of virtual reality will actually, actually track your position in space. So you can freely take a few steps in any direction you want, lean down, look closer. Where can I buy um, this? So, uh, just through the website. Website? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Yeah. How much does it cost? The headset, I think, is around $800. Okay. All and right. then plugs into a Cheaper computer. than a house. <laughs> That's true. Cheaper than a house. All right, so I can put this You're on? You're going in. Let's do it. Here I go. I feel like I need to like hold my breath or something. Like, <gasps> Oh, look. Is still she going to transport? Because she's pretty far away from everything right now. No? Okay. All right, so turn to oh, your left. Beautiful. Yes. I love that sofa. So this is just an example of kind of quality level mm -hmm. that you're able to stand into. Obviously this doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. um, and this room, it was on our side, primarily a look development room to showcase the quality of the environment in VR. So Beauty. everything is so lifelike from the natural light to the pillows, to the, the sphere on the table. I can, I'm like, I can probably sense how metallic and cold it is right now. How do you digitize all of these lifelike elements? So this is what I was talking about when we talked about brands needing to create the assets first. So once the, they're created, you can put them into these virtual environments and then allow people to go into a space that doesn't exist. So all of that we created in the computer with a real focus on detail and lighting to make sure it's beautiful and photorealistic. It's amazing. It's yep. amazing. So. Ultimately, let's say I'm a designer and I have a client and I have a showroom, a VR showroom. If my client doesn't like that Magnolia painting, which why wouldn't they? It's beautiful. We could flick of a hand, change it, and then you can see how it would look on your wall. Pretty much, yeah. That's the next level. I describe it as think of the real world plus superpowers. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So this is that what you're describing is that you would be able to just change the floor to whatever floor you want. Um, and really, it's the other thing you start to do is you think of it as an actual retail platform mm -hmm. because now instead of having to go and think of, look at a couch in one store and look at artwork in another store and look at flooring in a third store and then try and visualize it yourself, you can actually see it all come together in your actual space. It's amazing. I, like, I, I want this to be my life. <laughs> like, it's beautiful. Are you kidding me? So that's a good example of just the photo reel version that's we're showing you the one that we've just got the most beautiful the one that has all the interactivity mm -hmm. is being upgraded right now Tell this me about is this. virtual reality fantasy land um, and one of the things we're doing a lot of people are, are really trying to figure out how you get people into virtual reality how you make it more social more interactive one of the things we're currently doing is actually live motion capture into virtual reality, Ooh. which is going to open a lot of different avenues, both for the entertainment sector, but also even like video conferencing type concepts. Um, so in this case, it'll be a live demo. You're going to go into this castle area, and then you're going to meet a little digital character okay, who's so driven gonna... by a live character. All right, so I'm going to put on the headset. So you're going in. Okay, I see the floor. I see the statue, I see this beautiful dome, and I'm going to turn All right. to my right. Then, oh, hello. Hey wow. Right, so there's a, there's Erica. somebody there. Erica can walk over. I'll hand her the mic. Oh, my gosh. Okay, Erica, can you raise the roof? <laughs> yes, this is amazing. So what, are, what would be the implications for this? Um, how would I use this? Um, I would say it would cut down on your motion capture pipeline, so production costs and being able to iterate a lot faster. Because you can actually see something in the environment and make changes a lot sooner and then be able to see which takes you like sooner and 
just make an awesome production from there. Nice. Um, I feel kind of like a creepy old dude at the pool that's like looking you up and down, <laughs> but I literally have to look you up and down to like get the whole thing. So ap apologies. I've, you know, now I know what that feels like. Um, <laughs> okay, but take me through. Um, Take me through the possibilities because right now I'm like a five-year-old that just walked into Disney World and I'm like, this is just the coolest, right? But like, what does this mean? What does this mean for your company? How, how are brands and organizations able to use this new technology to, to further whatever agenda they might have? It's, so this chat again. Hello hey. in the <laughs> virtual world. So Erica's still over there, but I'm talking. Okay. Um, the, it is really broad sweeping because now it's talking about, it, like you just said, mm -hmm. wow, now I know what that feels like. Mm -hmm. That's actually a huge use case. The right. empathy that you're gonna feel from a standpoint of getting in somebody else's perspective, mm -hmm. whether it's like, ideally it's a, a good thing mm -hmm. where you're trying to understand um, you know, just that, somebody else's perspective on the world. So I think VR opens the possibility for that. In this case of live motion capture, one of the things we built is uh, live, uh, we call it just VR previs, mm -hmm. but it's in the filmmaking industry or in what we use the stage for. Um, you are pre-visualizing, pre pre-visualizing, okay. You are pre-visualizing. It's Friday. <laughs> it's Friday. It's fine. Come on. <laughs> um, what this your whole scene's gonna be, and currently that happens by a director talking to artist at a computer. What we build is any director can go into the virtual set, imagine this one, and find all of their camera angles with live actors and directing them as they are doing it. That's huge. Um, so that's a big one for yeah. the entertainment world. Yeah. And then, yeah, we'll just see where it goes from there. This is awesome. This is so awesome. Like, <laughs> do you love what you do? I'm completely geeking out right now. I mean. Yeah. yeah, I definitely get to have fun every day. Wow. You know, wow. digital duct tape. Yeah, digital duct tape. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> digital duct tape. Maybe you can walk a little okay. further. La, la, la. For you to get in the shot. <laughs> I know, I was like, I don't know what, what do I do with my hands, you know? <laughs> yeah, and where is she really? Yeah, she's like, I don't know. Man, that's amazing. That is so amazing. Um, so I'm just going to load this app up for you, okay. which is a pretty fun game. Wait, are you controlling something yes. with your hand without yes. touching I it? Like, <laughs> I look like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> There's a gesture that you'll get used to. Uh -huh. um, after you put the headset on, uh -huh. it goes forward and back. Oh, forward wow. And, back. Um, and then you can use the tighter in the back of your head. Uh-huh. And you can go completely hands-free, so that way you can just, you know, do what I'm doing and just, you know, be a wizard and just point. Um, so the, the That's just, the wizard move. Oh. just, Aww. yes. This is how you bring up the main Microsoft interface. You just, yeah, you just spawn it into existence. <laughs> yes. As long as your hand is within the camp, within the field of your vision, then it'll pop up on this menu. Uh, is this really happening right <laughs> now? <laughs> yeah, it is. This so. is amazing. So let's just get the game. I've like closed it four times doing the gesture with you. <laughs> okay. All right, and then I'm gonna let you get good started on it. Okay. All right. Um, yep. Just like I put it on, just up and over your head. And what it'll be is oh. it'll say full like window. Yeah, I'm gonna tighten it. Yep, um, so you'll see it's like a little square window in which you can see some text. Yep. You're gonna see effects. That's no, good. Okay. So first. Oh. Whoa. Okay, do you see a Microsoft window? Uh, not yet. Oh, now I do. Wow. All right, so that pauses any application that's open and it lets you, you know, touch everything. So, yeah, you can just, if you pat his head, you should be able to click apps. And if you do that gesture again, you should be able to go back to your game. So right now there's a dot on the, I chose hologram just because they're the coolest. Why not? Um, and so now there's a dot if I move my head to either unpin or uninstall, but I want to use my hands. So how do I shift it from headset to hand mode? Your to hand mode? like the mouse yeah. cursor and your yes. hand is like the clicker. So your head, wherever way you're facing at the time, uh -huh. that's your cursor. So okay. if you want to select different options, wherever mm -hmm. the dot is, mm -hmm. you can just look in that direction. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yep. And just like clicking a mouse, you point and click your finger. I'm a, I'm a learner by doer, and I just learned by doing, and that was awesome. So awesome. that's an official term, right? Yep. Learner by doer. <laughs> Completely. 
So can you see what I see now on the screen? Nope. You're nope. in your own little world. You're I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, ooh, ballerina. Cortana, take a picture. No. Hmm. Cortana, take a picture. Oh, well. It's all right. Okay, so right now hmm. I've got, what is this called again? That's the Microsoft HoloLens. This is the Microsoft HoloLens, and there is a ballerina that I have selected from a menu, and I have put her in the air. She's hanging out up there, ready to do what I want her to do, which is insane and fun. But yeah. obviously this is a very expensive piece of equipment with way cooler implications than just, hey, Titani wants to have fun with the ballerina. So I mean, it's super stylish, though. You, well, kinda, you own it. It's good. It's what I do. It's Friday. It's what I do. But tell me, like, what are the implications? What, what do we do with this from a larger scale um, scale? Yeah. So I think right now, it's this is the first time anyone's ever seen that technology exist. Like you're actually seeing a hologram floating that stays there persistently. If you go home and come back, it's still here. And I'll, I, you can enter, give it to me and I'll see what you're looking yeah. at. So it's the very first step in that whole ecosystem of AR, or some people are calling it mixed reality mm -hmm. now. So it is an expensive headset. But areas that it's being used right now, especially our training, mm -hmm. um, or so if you think of a mechanic of any kind who's yeah. working on something who can actually look at it and then get immediate visual feedback on the steps they need to do to correct something. Um, so there's some immediate use cases in industry. Mm -hmm. It's definitely got some miniaturization to do yeah, and yeah. some to make it something more consumer facing. Um, but that is definitely where a lot of money and investment is being targeted right now. Well, and what's amazing about this piece of equipment is that, yes, I control things with my head movement, but it's also freeform. My finger is now the clicker on a mouse. Yeah. yeah. What? That's well, insane. it's completely developed only to make people look schizophrenic oh my gosh, because you walk dancing. around just doing this all day long. Yeah. And people are like, oh, what are you doing? Yeah, exactly. Butterflies. Not that kind of Friday. <laughs> 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 this is insane. So I can't even begin to eloquently describe the amazingness, amazingness that this could be described as. So, I mean, take the floor. What does this mean for Trick 3D? And what does this mean for the future of innovation? So there's the simplest use case that everybody will get right out of the gate. And this is where sort of the future vision that somebody like Microsoft would put out there is the death of any monitor or screen. Okay. If you can miniaturize that enough, mm -hmm. then you don't have to buy a flat screen. You don't have to have one monitor because you can pop up a video screen wherever you want, whenever you want. So it's mobile. So it'd be mobile. So yes, exactly. So there are apps already that allow you to watch YouTube floating on a screen, whatever size you want, right in front of you. So that's pretty easy to get. Like I just have a screen wherever I want, whenever I want, um, whatever size I want. So that's the easy case. The next would be products in your home. Um, so again, like VR, when we were talking about being able to switch out floors or furniture, mm -hmm. but in this case, you could do it just with the specific asset. So to actually be your current layout of your house and then trying to like put a couch in that space. Oh, that's um, dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> and good. <laughs> yeah. And then gaming is clearly one, like I know Microsoft has a Minecraft version or you think of like elevating board games. And then the next layer is multiplayer when we're both wearing headsets, but we're seeing the same thing. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. Um, Chad, I know that you guys are super busy. You got a lot of projects you're working on. Um, the fact that we get to come in and, and have some of your time and your team's time is just so much appreciated. So thank you so much. You're, you're the man. You. Like, thank you. Thank you so much.